Love is lovely. War is kind of ugly. When I say make love, I mean war. Stick around, don't be no clown, or maybe you can see what I put down. Your music, I must be my musical business. And so we'll be young or only, just got to let the good times roll. Even from a top to the very last drop, ain't no need to go for comp, cause I'm your musical lollipop and don't look back, you know? Yeah. I just need to break down in regards to the DJs prior to you where you got the inspiration. I'm aware of Count Machupi, Sir Lord Comic. Were there any American artists that were kind of doing a talking thing that influenced you? Lobo Jordan. Lobo Jordan, he's a singer, but to me, it's like he it was more uh, jive talker, you know? Like them slick talking. Hey, you know about the hear but those cheeky, you know them style? <laughs> yeah. So that was the thing I like with this man. It was, for me, if there was a rapper, I think Louis Jordan was the first rapper. To me, you know? So you were historically say Yeah, the if there was a rapper at the time, because in my time, I never know of the rappers. You see me? So, as far as I'm concerned, if you was a rapper at the time, it'd have to be Louis Jordan or maybe Louis Prima. Louis Prima was a white man. And, but this Louis Jordan youth is something else, you know? Because what I just did a while ago, he did those type of stuff. And he take up his hand, blow this tennis saxophone, blow some wicked tune, man, I tell you this man. He's the best. What? In that farm. No. I never hear who was Count Machuki influence. But I hardly think at the time there was any influence with Count Machuki. So you think Count Machuki was just an organic? Like Him is just good like that. You hear me? The man, when he talk, you have to listen to him. When he's at the dance and talking, he don't say a lot of stuff. He don't say a lot of stuff, but you just have to listen to him. Song makes sense. That's how much it be. Yeah, but I, I still know and then, but I'm going to the studio and record where I have to record, but he's a man with certain vibes you now. Like, just explain why you stay with Duke Reed instead of kind of going to do a little more Okay. The reason why I stay with Drew Creed? Drew Creed is a man who look after me when I come every week to my house. I go to Drew Creed for my money, for run my house, for get to my woman, for run my house. So I have food straight. And I have my house with my furniture there, man, and the little things there. Things that will keep me comfortable. You know? So, I don't need for run go a Coxon, run go a Jackson, and run go a Maxon. No, because I am getting what I need at Jew Creed. You see me? And so I don't need for run upon down and stuff like that. So it like it keep me. You think it's one or two people when my record with Jew Creed is that the whole Jamaica a producer? Find me. It's up to me. You tell them yes, I know. Do you deal with all the artists like that, or are you more dealt with you on that level? I'm more deal with, him deal with me a lot on that level. I never really stop to think who him deal with good from who him deal with bad, you know, because he's a man. Depends upon how you carry your hang yourself. Produce a deal with you like that. Because if them say you're an idiot, them deal with you like idiot, you know. You know, for real. If them say them can come to study, say, well, the tune and the sell nothing and move from in front of my business place. I tell him bad man friend say, move him from yourself. Them can't do that. But if them sister them can't do that, then them just have to deal with you a certain way because look. I stand up a Jew queen and say, man, come to him for pay. And I'm just telling bad man friend say, 
move him from here, so. So me now, as a man who just started with hard to do, me now, just, just say, say to myself now, I said, wait, I saw this thing go. When me dear any producer deal with me like that. You understand? Yeah, mom. I tell myself these things that are you. So no man can haul me up and throw me around as I'm feeling mine. No one. Come and allow that. Duke no, him couldn't deal with me certain way. And the man know that. Because I wasn't like a man where you can just no work for you. And after I done work for you. You come tell me. I have the money to forget you, you know. Move from here, so. I'm going to play that. Tobis tried that. I'm never successful. Was that early on or was that later? Early on, when we start record, when we so start, I played sound. Yeah, yeah. Like, me go play out one week. Just real quick, how did you reach on King Tubby's song? All right, after me leave Sir George Atomic over in the Jonestown, Tobis come and dance one night and hear me, I play. And Tommy said, boy, I don't like you come play my sound, you know. I don't want to leave the sound over the long time. So I'm going to Tubby's. I'm going to go to King Tubby's. It's like, <laughs> hey, it's like people from our walks call tell me, you have to play my dance next week, you know. You have to come play my dance two months time, you know. And I just start to go and yeah, have the song. love of the people. Where's it, where did you move after? It was like every Sunday or something? I used to play over at Gold Coast Beach I on Sunday. Sunday's Gold Coast Beach and Carver Beach. Them dance just some big ram dance, man. Big pop dance going from day to the next morning. Yeah? So during that time, he was like a full grown celebrity because you have King Tubby sound and you have this, the singles you were putting out. <laughs> yes. That is, yeah, that is, that is a little time now. Good little time after because I never really forget where I come from. I still go back and play him sound, you know, because. Start get big now, but I don't watch that. Still go back, play them sound, and it's them time to dance around, you know? So, yes, it was like that. And what, what was the experience like signing to a foreign company at that time? You did that I first started playing for Tubby's. Long after, Tubby's done with sound, and I've been working with a guy named Prince Tony, Virgin Record, Richard Branson, come here. After I do album for Tony. Richard Branson come here and sign me like for the couple albums for them and it was one of my most I would say my biggest moment in this business because start sell record worldwide now. Don't know Africa about all over, you know? Do a true name do an album name not a rebel sell worldwide. Chalice in the Palace and yeah, the records that sell a lot. And so, Virgin, I have to really lift my heart to Richard Branson of Virgin Records because they make a lot of people know of me, you know? And I really respect that. They make the whole world like know about me, and that is great, you know? It's not much information circulated on King Tubby, and you being the man that was amongst them. I, mm -hmm. You hear he was a musical genius and all these things. Definitely. Why? I just want to know why was he a musical genius and like what kind of what was his mission at the time? You know, like what was going on? Tubby is a man who he build amplifiers, repair anything electrical, build anything electrical, and he was also a good producer. He's produced King Kong and Tony Red Rose and quite a few more artists, you know. So he was a producer that knew music. He wasn't a financial producer. He was a producer producer. He knew, yes. He knew, he knew, he knew music. You know what I mean? It's, it's like Joe Creed. You could have, I would have said, a hit head. He knew when you're done, when you make a hit. So he was fire up a whole heap of shot up in the roof of the studio. 
Whenever I, when I don't wait to turn on tell the people and this station will the nation with version and wait to the ball, the most gunshot fire up in that roof from Drew Creed. Because him knows I hit him up. Him smart to whatever him do. Same like King Tubbies, you know. But I would have said Drew Creed is a more advanced producer more than Tubbies. Because he's an older producer, bigger man and know more about the business more than Tubbies. But Tubbies was a genius in recording, with effects, you know? Tubbies was a man like that. Genius with building sound, making sound, amplifiers and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually um, two different men when you check it. One know about the recording business more than the other, and the other one know about amplifier building more than the other one. You know, so it was like two different what, people. What? Mixing? No, mix up with King Tubby's when he, when he got killed. Like, what was the story? Was it just a random violence? Or My friend, I was living over in California when Tubby's dead. But. Are you living in California for a while? Ten years. I never knew that, yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> they were in the Santa Ana, ten years. Tubby's. Them pay for kill tubbies, as far as I understand, really. Is, is, is it true with the radio station, he's really trying to get the radio station going or not? Tubbies, he, this man, he can just walk right here now and he just come and tell you, get a tall stick, get a, high, a tall piece of stick and put it up. And he run, you ever see a little thing in the radio that when you turn it, is the tuner? Yeah, and just get one of that, like a big size one, like this size. And I'm just take off on the station, and I'm going to take off of the, the radio, you know. And yeah, listen to him, you know. I'm just take off, them time you have RJR and JBC. I'm just take off anybody in feel like taking off. And yeah, tune into him. You're compulsory after tuning into him because him take them off. You understand? Remember one time me and him do that and the man play, we play some dub plate when no one, no radio station. So we hear we hear somebody next door say, let him say, Chan, listen to the station now. I play a big time tune them a play when no, when no station radio station ever play. I will stand up and I listen. Walk go like a mile or so from the with, with radio. And I listen to him and I just see when him say to me, say, right, come. I'll just go back. If he's a genius like that, no man. If it's like that, him travel away the man. Him can change any sound in a, any amplifier, any time, just with one resistor. You hear me? That's Enough time me and him catch up because the sound I play good enough. And him just come with a resistor and say, you know, I'm not like that sound out there. say, leave the thing, the man. Man just change, put a resistor, one side or so, and one over here so, and the sound change. And you just have to listen. The man is a genius. The man is a genius, man. Yeah.